You have to understand how to build a winning environment so your people can win. Everybody wants to learn how to build a sales team, how to build a team of two, three, four, five, 10, 50, 100. It doesn't matter what your number is. If you do not apply these principles, you're not gonna have an environment that is conducive for them to grow, okay? So we're gonna talk about some of the things that you can actually implement today, right now, so you can have a winning team, so you're not required to be there all the time to motivate them, to inspire them, to make them work harder, or whatever it is that you need them to do. You're gonna have a growing team that's gonna work on their own and be self-sufficient, okay? So number one, when it comes to building an, an amazing team, right? A winning organization, a winning force, what you want to do is you wanna recruit a players, okay? A players, what does that mean? A lot of times we want to win, but we bring on a bunch of crap into the team. If you have a bunch of C players, how do you expect them to create success? How do you expect to have a winning team or a winning organization when you just let any schmuck come into your team? How do you do that? You have to have a sifting process. You have to understand that before you bring them on board and before you bring them into your team, you have to have a vetting process. You have to sift through them. You have to shake the tree, so to say, to say, okay, is this the kind of person that I want on my business team? I say this all the time. I do not hire based on skill set. I hire based on character. It's very important. But when I say character, people are like, oh, wow, he's a good person. He's a nice dude. He's this and that. No, no, no. What are the characteristics that you're looking for in your organization, in your team? What are you looking for specifically? Make a list. And then you look at this person. Let's say his name is Joey Shamoe. And you say, okay, does this person match what we are looking for? And if the answer is no, you do not hire them. Even if this guy can bring you a ton of money, a ton of revenue, a ton of sales, a ton of business, you do not bring them on board because they have to match. They have to match the criteria of your characteristics that you're looking for, okay? Now, I know it's not easy, okay, to say that because a lot of us want to have a quality people, but we're like, how do we recruit those guys? How do we find those guys? Well, the thing is this, you don't have to recruit them. They're gonna chase you. Okay, and how you do that is very simple. You have to have a magnetic, magnetic environment. Okay, you have to have an environment that's magnetic, meaning that people are attracted to it. For example, the social media content that I put out every single day, you see my guys, they're excited 24 seven. As a matter of fact, that's one of the requirements for them to work with us. If they're not excited and pumped up about life, we don't want them. I don't care how good they are. If you have a bad attitude and you're not excited about life, you're not gonna fit in our culture. And it's okay if you have a bad day or a bad week, it happens, stuff happens, but you come into the office, you come into our environment, you are magnetized, you are excited about that environment, and we uplift people in that kind of environment. So people want to be part of that group. I don't have to tell people to show up to the office. As a matter of fact, we don't have that many people that miss the office, as a matter of fact, because everybody wants to be there. And by the way, they're always there on time, 90 plus percent. And the reason why I say 90 plus percent is because sometimes the new guys come in and they don't know the culture and they think, oh, showing up late is actually a normal thing. Not in our culture. In our culture, they come there early. As a matter of fact, and let's say, for example, we start a meeting at 10 o'clock. A lot of the guys are there at 920, 930, 940, early, ready to start the meeting because they're hungry because the environment is magnetic. And if you have a magnetic environment, what ends up happening is that people want to work with you and it's much easier to recruit a quality people. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna have a growing path for your people, okay? There are people wanna grow. People want to grow in business. People want to grow in their personal life. People want to grow spiritually, emotionally, mentally. How does your business or how does your team help them grow? How does your business and how does your team, right, and your environment help them become better individuals? And that's what you have to ask yourself every single day. What are you doing in your environment to help people grow? Are you investing your time into them? Are you giving them programs? Are you investing money, time, energy, and resources to make them better? Or are you just thinking about the money that's gonna come from them? Are you just trying to take a whip and just start beating them up so they can make you sales and make you money or whatever it may be? And a lot of companies do that to their people. They burn their people out because they want them to work, 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 work. But the thing is this, the best thing you could do for your team is to invest in them. The best thing you could do for them is to create a growing path for them and teach them how to become better individuals. Because the more you invest in them, the better your returns. The more you invest in them and their life and help them get what they want and help them become better individuals, your company will 10X. And most people miss that. They're like, you know what, Michael, that sounds awesome. It sounds really good, but I don't have the time, the energy, nor do I have the money to invest in them. Let them go make me some money and then I'll do that. The answer is no. You do that first. 
You first invest in them, you first take care of them, and by default, they will bring you a lot of revenue. As a matter of fact, they'll bring you way more revenue than you could ever imagine because you take care of them first. I learned this a long time ago. I don't know if it was Zig Ziglar or somebody said this a long time ago to me. They said, you know, uh, uh, if you, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a rip about you. You got to show them that you care about them first. And yes, you have to be the bigger person because you're the business owner. You're the team leader. You're the manager. You're the person that's leading your team. So you have to take the first step and say, you know what? I'm going to invest my time into them. I'm going to invest my money into them, my resources, my energy. Every single weekend, I invest time into my team. Oh, Michael, you don't understand. I have kids. I have a wife. I have a fiance. Trust me. I have friends too. But my team is very important to me. This doesn't mean that I neglect my family or my friends. No, no, no. But I include them into my family and my friends. They're the people that I want. I want to see them win. And if I create a growing path for them and I invest in them, what will end up happening is that the returns are infinite because they're going to stick around you for a very long time. Okay? Which leads me to the next thing. You need to have vision. Man without vision shall perish, right? We always hear that. But what does that mean to have a vision? When we started this solar company last year, okay? As a matter of fact, it was a one-year anniversary. We had literally just a vision. We are going to build a, ma a massive office, okay? And right now, as we're recording this video, okay, this specific office has about 30 plus people, okay? And we have about 13, 14 staff that are actually taking care of this office, okay? Salaries, employees, whatever you want to call them, okay? I call them team members because I don't like the word employees, but these are my people. And they're taking care of these 30 people because there's a lot of things that go on in the solar industry, as you can imagine. Apartments, utilities, utilities, this, this, that. There's a lot of things going on. It's a lot of chaos, right? Organized chaos. My question is this to you. When we first started this, right, do you think we had a vision or do you think it just kind of happened by mistake? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. What do you think happened? Of course we had a vision. I was so excited about the vision. I told them we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to have this, we're going to have that. And literally everything that we predicted as a team, it came to fruition. Because the person who's leading the pack has to have a vision. You have to take your team and show them how to create success by painting them a beautiful picture, right? It's like, it's like a, lot of, a lot of you vision, you know, you visionaries, you leaders, you business owners, you expect your people to know exactly what's in your head. But you have to be able to paint the vision to them so they can see it, so they can feel it, so they can taste it. Once they have that, it's game over. Because once they believe and their conviction is high enough and their confidence is high enough that they can do it and they can achieve it, game over. You're going to achieve those goals. And right now we have a vision in our company and it, everybody knows it. Everybody speaks it. Everyone feels it because that's what we're talking about every single day. It's not a once a year thing. Not in January 1 we talk about it. Not December 28th. We do it every single day, every single week, every single month. Okay? Next is accountability. Okay? Don't mind my spelling. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to school to learn how to spell. Okay? Accountability. Okay, as a leader, if you want to have a winning team and you want to build a massive organization, you have to keep your people accountable to what they say they were going to do. So for example, I have one of my guys, all right, he's going to make a million dollars this year, okay? And he comes up to me, he's like, Michael, I'm going to work eight days a week, moving forward seven days a week for two weeks out of the month. So seven days, seven days. And the other week, I'm going to work six and six. I said, perfect. I said, I'm going to screenshot this message. And I said, is it okay? I'll hold you accountable to what you say you're going to do. He said, of course. I said, perfect. I love doing that. Why? Because I know that people are humans. And when the excitement is this high, they're going to say whatever they want. But the second the excitement and emotions go away, they start to kind of, you know, uh, they don't want to do it. So guess what? Two weeks, two weeks later, he worked six days that week. And he was supposed to work the seventh. So guess what I did? Messaged him. I said, hey, remember what you told me? You told me you gave me permission to hold you accountable. He's like, you know what? You're right. Boom. And he went out there and he crushed it that day. Okay. Now this guy's going to make seven figures this year. Okay. Think about that. Like it's very, like you might say, Michael, I can't, you know, how do I hold them accountable? Listen, you hold your team accountable and I don't care if they're making seven figures or two figures. It doesn't matter. You hold your team accountable to what they say they're going to do. The challenge is this. Most of you guys do not hold yourself accountable. So you don't have the confidence and the balls to hold someone else accountable. That's why in order to have a winning team, you have to be an amazing leader, right? You have to be a good leader of yourself. You have to lead yourself. If you're able to lead you, it's much easier to lead a pack of wolves. But if you can't lead yourself, the difficulty is extremely high. And that is why most people don't have successful teams because they do not lead themselves. And if you can't lead yourselves, you will not lead a team. And that's a domino effect. 
So the next step you wanna do right now is educate yourself, just like you're watching this video right now. Educate yourself on how to become a better leader. Look at some of the videos that we have posted on my YouTube channel on how to become a better individual, a better leader, and a better salesperson so you can go out there and make a bigger impact. Because remember, building a winning team is not about how amazing you are. Building a winning team is showing others how amazing they are and letting them unravel their gifts and their strengths and their greatness. And if you do that the correct way, I promise you the rewards that come from building a winning team is incredible. Infinite results. I can't even give you numbers because it's just infinite results and it's an impact on your heart as well. So I love you and I appreciate you for watching this video. Do me a favor, like, sub subscribe. It'll be amazing information for you to learn how to become a better leader so you can build a, build a winning team. If you want some different content, let me know in the comments below what kind of content you want. If you want more leadership, you want more sales, you want more specific on building business, whatever it is, I'm here to serve you and help you become a better individual and a better leader so you can go out there and create a massive, massive winning team. I appreciate you once again. Thank you so much. I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe.